Okay, welcome to the actual video. <laughs> this is um, some candy corns that I printed out that I drew and I scanned. And I felt like it could be good inspiration. Um, they can draw their own to plan it out if they're planners. If they're not, that's okay too. I also have my sculpture sitting here just so that I can remember what order the colors go in and more inspiration. Grumpy candy corn and smirky candy corn. So I'm using the cardboard like I told you. I have several sheets of it just because we buy lots of cat food. <laughs> we have like three cats. Um, and then for right now, I'm just going to kind of sketch out the shape that I want. It could be um, any shape. Like, like, obviously you want a triangle shape with the top curved. I can show you guys how to do that if it feels nerve-wracking to do. There's really no wrong way of doing it. That's one of the cool things about... Halloween is that everything is quirky and wild and and squiggly uh, just like how you know some movies that we love very much were completely drawn um, and created with like people's left hand just so it would look more wonky this one has you know a bite mark out of it this one looks more like a gnome I think I was trying to find like different ways of what if it was a Christmas candy corn and, and so that was silly and it didn't work out and it wasn't what I wanted, but the point is I allowed myself to go outside of the box and be wild enough to, you know, allow myself to have those ideas. Okay, there's nothing wrong with doing stuff that's silly if it's just for you. So what I usually do is start with just a bottom and instead of doing a straight line, I kind of curve it up on either end and then I go to draw real lightly a triangle um, you could use a ruler if you are one of those people that likes to be a perfectionist and there's nothing wrong with that okay I mean it's good to learn to go with the flow but for me I'm actually so lacking in wanting things to be like totally accurate that sometimes it's not what other people want um, and that's okay too right now it is you know if, you, if you're an artist and you have a, a certain job sometimes you have to learn how to do things you know this has to be this many inches and this has to be this this line and if that's not you that's not you so what I did is I just drew like I was gonna make a triangle and then curve the top easy peasy and then we know that the candy corn has three lines. So I usually kind of lightly draw that in. And again, it's not a straight line. I'm, I'm curving it at either end. Okay. And you might want to plan where your holes will be since it is going to be garland. Um, and they don't have to be there. If you want them to be wonky, like where they hang funny, you might want to put them in a different spot. You can play around with that. And then as far as it goes to the silly faces that I usually do, I do all kinds of eyes. And what I mean by that is like this one, you know, has the, the dead crisscross. This one has um, the sleepy bags under his eyes. This one's got more of the cute color. I tend to do one big, one small. This one has more like anime square type eyes. This one has little tiny eyes. Um, you can even make it look like glasses with that line. So uh, feel free. With this one, I did a moon shape just for fun. Um, you know, this one has glasses too. So if you want to do it kind of like a family portrait, you could do that where Say you have five people in your family, you can make five candy corns and then hang them up. Um, you know, or if you want to do it for your friends, since you guys are doing virtual school right now, that might be a good idea. 
I'm going to just go with the flow and do my usual. I'm gonna do a big eye and a little eye. And I this is how I do my noses. Let's see if I, can. I hope you guys can see well. I do a circle and another like circle and another little circle just like that. And then a little line here for that dip that's in between your nose and eyes. And you can even extend this out if you want. Ta-da! That's how I make my noses. You could put some little darker spots there to make it look like you got nostrils. Sometimes I do a little moon shape. So I can be like, that's my highlight. And you can see that's how I sculpt them too. Circle, circle, circle. I let the... And so it, it turns out pretty cool. This one was a little different. I just did one big without as much definition in the nostril area. And it's a little upturned. Hmm. Cute. So I'm going to make this one a super smiley one. I always do my dip right by this part. And then the up pieces on either end. Ooh, maybe we'll make like a curly. You could do a mustache and a monocle. If you don't know what a monocle is, look it up. It's something fun to find out. When you're going through these, it's cool to use your imagination. And what I mean by that sounds simple but study up on different things that people might have on on their body like freckles or moles um this one has a few little grumpy old man warts um, this one has the little dimples okay and the bags under their eyes using those type of things will make your candy corn look special so I'm gonna keep this one pretty simple and I'm gonna put a mole here and a mole here, just like me. Yes, I have moles on my face, get over it. Don't let people bully you or make fun of you for stuff that you have. It's just a part of you, that's it. These are the things that we talk about in the class session as well. We try to talk about being okay with who we are being okay with the way we do art. Um, there are some that are very good. Once you get to this point, it's super easy. Paint, marker, crayons, whatever you want. You could even take construction paper that's different colors and cut it out to fit and glue it on like a paper collage. Like there's really so many places you could go with this. For some reason, I feel like starting with orange, which doesn't make any sense because it's right in the middle, but I'm gonna use crayons. And this does not have to look perfect. It just needs to look cool. Cool, cute, um, creative. Ooh, cool, cute, creative. Hmm, they're all like the same letter. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna do orange and my my pencil lines, I am not worried about that either. Feel free to spin your paper around. I used to have an art teacher that said that that was like, not good, you can't spin your paper around. Well, guess what? I do and it helps me, so there. Um, you know, you have to have respect for your art teachers. You have to follow them if they're doing step by step. But when you're on your own, don't be scared to break some of those rules sometimes. Don't be scared to color the whole thing upside down. You know, don't be scared to uh, do weird colors. Like what if I wanted to make this candy corn pink and white? Then that's what I'm gonna do. You know, when you are being taught by a professional, you know, art teacher and you are doing classes or you're in school and you're doing classes, have respect for your teachers because sometimes we have to learn the rules 
in order to figure out good ways to break them. Um, I'm gonna add, I just did a light, light orange and then went in with a darker orange in the corners. You know, just in the corners because that's where I feel like the, I'm gonna make this highlight yellow. That's where I feel like the um, darkness would be under the eyes. Now the highlights would be the little cheek area, the top of the nose. Um, I might even go over his eyes here at the top. I don't like these crummy, crummy things. I'm using yucky crayons too. Like, don't be afraid that because you don't have the best quality uh, materials that you can't do it. You might just have to figure it out. I've learned that if I rub it, it'll go away. <laughs> now we do want yellow on the bottom too. But we talk about these things in my art class because art session, I still get hung up on saying class even though I don't want to. I wanna break the mold of that. I wanna make it to where we can um, really learn to, to be ourselves. Um, What's up? Remember when when we got two hearts and lights? Uh-huh. And three? Uh-huh. Um, do you know that the the statue that goes like this? Yeah, the, 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 um. Queen statue? Yeah. Um. She'll give you more hearts if you have enough. Yeah, she gave me. Ooh, now you have more. Yeah. Talking about Zelda, guys. And that's something, too, with our sessions. We don't always talk about art. Um, that was my son. He's four. He'll be five um, on the 25th of this month. It is really hard as a mom or as a kid to not get distracted. And sometimes we just have to allow that distraction to happen so we can get back to what we want to. And that's okay. Um, you know, I talk about video games with the kids during the sessions. Huh. We talked about Animal Crossing that one time. Um... I don't have a white crayon. Uh-oh. Bum, bum, bum. This could be something to cause for concern. I dump my crayons in a basket because I like to, I like to do this. <laughs> it feels good. Hmm. I might have to borrow a crayon from my son. Now, if I didn't have a white crayon at all, what would I do? Let's just, let me show you what I would probably do. I'll give, I'll give you a few options of the way I would save my art if I was starting to panic. First off, you could use um, white paint if, if that's what you have. So there's also these two colors. Let's see, hopefully it's not named something totally insane that I can't. Wild blue yonder. Gray. <laughs> So we could use those. I could go in with this blue color. It's not normal, but I'm okay with it. It's a little lighter. You know, maybe I'll put some gray up here. Oh, is it making you guys cringe, the ones that actually eat candy corn or the ones that uh, are sticklers on what color you do things? But I mean, it's not that bad. Like if that's had to, how it had to be, I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't destroy me. I could even add a little bit of gray in here. I mean, it's a Halloween candy corn. Maybe he's feeling a little sad or maybe he's dressed up in a costume or maybe she needs some lipstick. <laughs> Should we put red lips on it? Let's see what happens. Ooh, this is magenta. La 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 la. There you go. There we go. And there was another way I could have done this, and I'll show you a second way of doing it on the next candy corn. I always make the eyes black, but you don't have to. You can do blue, you could do green, you could do brown. Maybe I'll do like a weird color here. We'll do some yellow green to make it different. 
See, and I usually make the highlights white too. So don't get discouraged if you don't have what you normally do or what you feel like is what you wanted. Now, I think that's pretty cool. It's not too bad. Um, I'll probably go. Hey, Alistair, do you have a white crayon I can borrow? No. no. I'm going to cut it out. If you're little, needs help. Make sure you help. You don't want any ouchy fingers. I used to garden with my grandma, who's from Switzerland. And she had the craziest. Look, that already looks cute. She had the craziest garden, and when we would trim the flowers, my grandma would say that we were giving them haircuts. And there's a couple times that I clipped my finger, and it hurt, and I bled. But I wasn't scared. I still went back to gardening. Um, sometimes we get hurt, and it, it can be scary. But make sure you ask for help. If you need help, don't be scared to ask for help. Just because you ask for help does not mean that you're not a good artist or that you're not a big, big, uh, a big kid, okay? I have to ask for help sometimes, even with my art. There's been times I've had to ask for help when um, I was loading the kiln or unloading the kiln. There's times I got hurt when I was um, using the kiln. And I and I had I got scared of it a little bit, and it took me a while to be able to get back to it. If you don't know what a kiln is, it's K I L N kiln. Look it up. That's another thing you can see. I'm gonna do another one on camera. You could do a small one if you want. I'm gonna grab my marker real quick sometimes because I do whatever I want. I'm not always a hundred percent prepared. <laughs> but that's okay. So, I want people to understand that art is not perfect. That we don't have to have it be perfect all the time. These are the pens that I like to use for outlining things. So, I could outline this one. But I'm going to show you another way of doing it just in case. We're going to start out the same way. Part of the reason why the sessions that we do are so long, like an hour long, <laughs> they were supposed to be 45 minutes, but then the kids did, you guys didn't want to go, huh? You were like, no, I want to stay longer. So I moved it to an hour so that everybody would have enough time. Hmm, what do we want to do with this one? I kind of want to, ooh, I got an idea, guys. Seriously, it just came to me. All right. So I'm going to do, I don't have white right now, right? So I'm going to think outside of the box. And let's see if you guys can guess what I'm going to do. This should be a huge hint already. What is it? Oh, I wish I could hear you for real. Tell me what you think it is. Well, if you guessed Frankencorn, <laughs> Frankenstein, then you are correct. I'm going to give this one a square nose. And I'm going to give him a little grin like that with a chin. Okay. These are his scars. Don't be scared. <laughs> These are his bolts in his neck. Now, another kind of eye I like to do is this little square one. And then I put the highlight up here. Ooh, he's looking over that way. When you practice your highlights or your pupils, which is another thing you can look up if you don't know what it is. It depends on which decor decoration, <laughs> which direction you put them as to which way your candy corn will be looking. We're gonna have to come up with a cool color for this. So 
I'm gonna leave it at that. Like it doesn't have to be that fancy if if you don't want it to be. Now, the other thing that I could have done but didn't the last time was use the marker to outline it before I use my crayons. Marker doesn't go on top of crayons very well because crayons are waxy and the marker doesn't like it. Marker is like, gross, I don't wanna touch it. So if you are gonna outline them in marker, I would do that, look I made a little mistake right there, do you see that? I was going too fast and I did an extra triangle up instead of following that one down. No big deal, right? It's all good. It's all good, man. All right, so if you wanna do marker, you should do it before you do your coloring. Um, if you're gonna paint, you can Paint the black lines on after you're done with your character. If you have watercolor paper and you're doing watercolor, you can use marker over the top after it's dried, okay? If you're using acrylic, you can do acrylic black paint with the line brush after, or you could use a Sharpie. Um, if you're not too sure how your materials work, on top of each other, grab a scrap piece of whatever material you're using and try it. So if I go, okay, there's my crayon. Now I'm gonna go over it with Sharpie. Didn't really work. Worked on this side, not on this side. And it looks weird. Don't like that. Okay, what if I try this, this black ink pen? Oh, that really didn't work. Okay, well. What about my, my fancy pens? It kind of worked, but I feel like it might ruin my fancy pen. So now I would know, okay, those materials don't work together. Um, so if you think about outlining it first, let's see if that works. I'm going to take a green for the middle part of my frankencorn. Sometimes I like to color fast. Look, I can go right over the top of the marker and it still shows. Hooray! Sometimes I like to scribble. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's about, so it said sometimes a million, a million times. Uh, sometimes it is about how it feels to make the art, not necessarily what it, what it looks like. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting the dark color in the corners. I'm gonna put it under his eyeballs. I'm gonna give the corners and edges of his nose maybe solid under his eyebrows. That's where the shadows would go. But you don't have to do that. You could do it just one color if you want. Let's see. I'm going to take this color goldenrod. Do you ever find a color that you always pick up by accident? Like when you're looking in your crayon box or your pink box and you're like, oh, I'm going to use a different color. And you pick it and you're like, man, I use this color a lot. I have several colors like that. I do like mustard yellows a lot for some some reason, often. Um, which is funny, because as a kid, I hated the color brown, and I did not like any of the like 70s hippie color stuff. I thought it was yucky looking. <laughs> now I like it more. It feels oh, more it's earthy. Fun. It's a frankencorn. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. You're showing me your coding? No, it's not coding you like you're placing things. Oh my, 
Look at how much flood. Oh, she's flooding the city, guys. All right, so, hey, Lily, do you have a white crayon? Can you, one no, can you look for me? I lost, I only have 15 digits, and I lost 15 pounds. I like the feeling of digging in my crayon box. <laughs> I need black, and I need white. How are those two missing? I guess I could use dark brown. Yes. Yeah. All right, will you go see if you can find me a white one? Well. Normally, I would make, let's see, do we have, and I had a silver crayon at one point. I put it on your thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll do it. So, during these videos, I'm sure it seems wild that I would talk to the kids or not have what I need. But the truth is, like, that's stuff that happens when you're making art. It's not always perfect and I want people to see how you kind of have to go with the flow or fix it. This is copper because I don't have the silver. I don't have it. It still works though. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I have to fight fight the feeling of like, fight the, it's not fight the right fire with fire. color. So I'm going to use gray instead of white at the top. I know, fine. You can fix it. Mm, not until you bring me a white. <laughs> I know. Okay. Where did that super dark brown go? Aha. My last flood. Let's see if I can survive. Sepia. I'm going to use this color for his hair. Normally, I'd probably use black. But today, Frankencorn has brown hair. And brown eyebrows. And brown eyes. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh. What? I just got another idea. All right. Bring it in, Mom. I'm going to use Sharpie for the pupil. There. Okay, now for my last, ooh, guys, I just found a green that has glitter in it. Let's my mom's favorite color is green, just to let you know. Ooh, look at that. Okay, for all my, my little friends in my, my session, I know some of you girls like glitter, so this is for you. Who doesn't want a glittery candy corn? Mm, I want candy corn. Named Frank. I want a candy corn named Frank. Frank and corn, Frank and corn. Frank and corn, it's you. Alright. Ta da! <laughs> and get the glitter, girls. And boys. Boys can like glitter, too. Alright. So, I'm gonna cut this out just like the other one. Oh, you know what I didn't do? What? I'll do it after I cut it. What? I forgot to put the, the holes so that we know where to. Is uh, it more glitter on? Ah, more glitter! I need more glitter. Alright. Not cutting in the camera. <laughs> you guys can't see what I'm doing. All right. Oh, you're cutting it out? Yep, I'm gonna make, you know what garland is? Uh, look it up! No, um, if you, <laughs> look, look, it up. look it up if you don't know it. You guys are gonna have vocabulary now. Okay, um, garland. So you know when you have like, for Christmas you have cute stuff that hangs on a string and you hang it up, you tape it somewhere. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, or hang it up somewhere. So I'm making candy corn garland. Oh. And I'm using cardboard. So I need to poke holes in it. If, like I said, if you have a hole punch, it's probably better, definitely safer than a doll sewing needle. 
Um, but this is what I have. So this is what I'm using. And if you don't have something, have your parents help you figure something out. Uh, the reason why I'm using the doll one is because it's thicker. So look! Ta-da! We have two with string. You put the string in between. Too? Yeah. You put the string in between and you'll hang it. So oh, a garland, right. Yes, where well, you hang it. <laughs> now I remember. So I'm liking the black outline on this. I'm going to see if I can actually do it on this one. Hopefully it won't mess up my pen. At least on the major parts. Yay, it's kind of working, guys. And for those of you that are, are sad that we didn't have a session today, I am sorry, but I really wanted to s have some kind of Halloween thing for you guys. Um, because I know that Halloween is our favorite and it's going to be different this year. So, ta-da! I'm only going to make two, otherwise this video will be too long. But uh, this is what we have so far. And maybe I will post a picture on my Sweet Issues Facebook page. If you are wanting to sign up for the Halloween class, Halloween party. See, I keep saying class. If you want to. It's a Halloween party. Yes, we're going to do a Halloween party session. Where I would love for you guys to dress up in costume. And I would love for your parents to have treats for you or snacks. You know, cuties that look like pumpkins or um, bring some some candy corn. <laughs> and I will play Halloween music. I'm hoping to make a Halloween background. And again, it's freestyle. You guys can do whatever you want. If you like this, bring this. Do this. If, you, um, if your parents want to purchase the um, wood cutouts, I will have the wizard panda available. Wizard panda? I will have the death one available. And I will have the rest in peace 2020 um, available. You can use anything on them. Marker, paint crayon um and then i will also have coloring pages available if you sign up for the class you get a discount and i will pr uh, email them to you so you can print them out i know most of you already bought them last week um so i hope to see you guys next week at the little party um i will be dressed up it'll be fun and um, thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Oh, let me in. Let me in. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week, hopefully. And if not, we'll see you some other time. I will have classes coming up even through November and December because things are busy and stuff is wild. And I know you all need some time. Ooh. Ho! <laughs> oh. <laughs>